right. Um, good morning. Today at the Bent Brush, we are going to be working with clay. Today we're going to make a hand-built mug. A lot of people think that the only way you can do a mug is on the wheel. I'm going to show you a way that you can do it right at your tabletop, no wheel experience necessary. This is a very easy, straightforward project that anybody can do. Um, we do offer classes on this as well as walk-ins. So if you feel like this is enough information and you want to go ahead and do it on your own, you are more than welcome to come in anytime. I have already rolled out my clay just for time's sake. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to prep it and what we're going to do. I'm going to start by taking this rib and I'm going to smooth out the surface. There is a pattern that's in the clay from the canvas on the roller. Smoothing out the surface also evens out the, um, I think it's the tension on it and it helps from keep, keeping the clay from cracking. So I go two different directions and I go back and forth until it's nice and smooth and has no texture. And I'm going to go back and do it on the other side as well. All right, and I have a template here that I have worked with in the past. It um, renders a really usable size mug. So I'm going to lay that down and now I'm going to just cut it out. I'm going to lay this aside because we will use that later for the base and the handle. All right, so here I have the base of the body of my mug. So we have lots of options on texture. You can um, write stuff in the clay if you want it to personalize it. I, for demonstration purpose, I'm going to use one of our rollers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and with moderate pressure, I'm just going to push it and roll it down. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm gonna do that all the way across. You don't wanna push too hard because you don't wanna lose the thickness of your clay because that will compromise the integrity of the walls of your mug. Now I am going to make this top part where I'm going to drink from. So I'm going to smooth just that out because I personally do not like texture from my drinking surface. So I'm going to start with that. Now I have this little cutter and I am going to run it along here. And what this is going to do is cause a angled cut so that I have a place to line up. All right, now when we put clay together, we have to score it and then add some water to create what's called slip. The slip acts as the clay glue and holds it all together. So I'm gonna take my scratching tool and I am gonna scratch this up. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna scratch this up where the two pieces are gonna meet paintbrush and I'm just going to dab it on there to get it wet in there. It's going to create a little bit of mud. All right, and now I'm going to join those two pieces up. And now I need to get this um, seam even out. So I'm gonna take the end of this tool and where the seam lines up, and I don't know if you can see in there. I'm gonna smooth all that out. And what that's gonna ensure is that we have a solid surface on the inside so that this vessel will hold liquid. I don't wanna to push too hard because I don't wanna push through my seam, but I definitely want it to disappear. I can do the same thing on the outside. I don't want to do too much on the outside because I don't want to lose my texture. But I am going to take this and I'm going to very gently pull the seam. Now I am going to make 
the bottom. I'm gonna take this leftover scrap that we have and I'll line this up on it. And I'm gonna take my needle tool, I'm just gonna trace around it. it off because where I'm going to attach it we have to scratch it again. Same thing on the inside of this. All I'm doing is taking some water and it's flowing into those scratch marks. And then this creates the glue to stick this all together. I'm gonna give a gentle squeeze. When you're pushing it down, you're gonna see some of the clay ooze out. And we know we're getting a good seal on it. The same thing I did with the seam on the inside, I'm going to do with this seam and I'm going to smooth it out. So I'm going to take clay from this and I'm going to pull it down over. So I have my base on, it's nice and smooth. Now I'm going to set it down and I'm going to just give it some stamps just to push the seal out together. All right, now on the inside, because I want to ensure that this is good and sealed, I'm gonna take a piece of clay from our scraps. I'm gonna mold them together and I'm gonna create a coil. I'm gonna run this coil on the inside between the base and the walls of the mug and then I'm gonna smooth that out as well. inside of my mug is already scratched from when I put the top on, so now I'm just going to scratch this. Okay. Alright, so I scratched my coil and I'm going to set that down in there along the base between the wall of the mug and the bottom. And once I get this in place, I will show you. And then we're going to smooth that out in the same fashion that we did the seams on the side and the bottom. This just gives a little bit more integrity to the bottom and ensures a good seal. So we don't want our mug leaking anywhere. All right, so I'll give you a quick view of what it looks like in there before I even it all out. You can take your fingers, get them a little bit wet. You don't want them super wet because you don't want to create a mud. Take your fingers and smooth it out. I like using sponges for the same purpose because it gives a nice, even finish on it. And the goal at this point is to create a seamless bottom, so you don't want it to look like you smashed clay down in there. I have nice and smoothed out, and you can keep working on it as much as you deem necessary. You just want it as smooth as possible so that there's no crevices for anything to get into. So, for now, I feel pretty good about this one, so we're going to move on to the handle. Now I'm going to take a pretty good chunk, yeah, wedge all this together. When you're working with clay, you want to make sure that you make, um, get all the air pockets out because they can explode during the firing process if not. So what I'm doing is wedging it together. 
And this is something we can definitely help you with and most of the time we will have it done ahead of time for you. So now I am just gonna pull this into a pretty um, fat coil. Because this is a good size mug, we wanna make sure we have a stout handle. To smash it down because I want a flatter handle. So at this point you can just shape it however you want it to be. I'm going to continue with the pattern that I used on the outside and I'm going to run that along here. So I have my pattern on there. You can do the inside and outside. I'm just going to do the outside. Now I'm going to shape it into what resembles a question mark. I'm going to cut the bottom of this off. So I don't need all of that. And I'm going to line it up on here. I'm going to make a note of where it hits the mug. And I'm going to position the handle so that it is over the seam that we have. So what I'm doing at this point is taking my thumb and I am smoothing out the superficial cracks that are on the surface. Um, if you feel like your finger is sticking, get it very, very lightly wet and then you can take that and smooth it out some more. So, I'm gonna get that, I'm gonna cut that a little straighter. I'm gonna cut that a little straighter. And now I'm gonna scratch the same way I did with the seams. Scratch that up, the handle goes. And here. And both wet. And I'm going to press it on. And the clay is oozing out, which means the slip has sealed all those little cracks. So I am um, just smoothing out where the pieces are joined because it looks a little nicer that way. And this way I ensure that I have a good solid seal between the two pieces. So I've got that nice and smoothed out. Give it a little bit more. All right. Now if you find that your handle is pulling on the mug and giving it some deformity. You can take newspaper, um, other objects, and just set it underneath to give it some support and it'll help from pulling on the softer wet clay. So at this point I feel done with this. I'm going to let it sit and dry and then in about a week to a week and a half we are going to fire it. We need to ensure that it's completely dry. We do not want any steam building up in the clay because it will cause it to explode. So there is a time delay on this. Once it is ready to fire, we will put it in the kiln. After it is fired, it is ready to paint. This one has been painted, but has not been fired a second time for the glaze. And what I did with this one is I have a leaf pattern. And I took two of our pottery glazes. And what I did was I blended them so the texture on the mug is gonna pick up the different colors. And we have a lot of color variations on this product line and it's really fun glaze to work with. You can also um, paint however you want, this is your creation.